It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Uh, this is one, Brian, we get all the time. Uh, normally, I try to ask you questions I know the answer to. I don't exactly know the answer to this one because I think this is a hard one, but you have some really good insight. This is from um, uh, Alex. Alex says, hey, how do I find a good CPA for taxes? What are some good questions to ask or what's a good way to go about this process? Um, I can tell you we've had sort of a, a, a mixed interaction with folks who are trying to move from being self-repairs to moving to a professional preparer. Some folks love it and they say, you know what? I used to like get my shoe box and I'd go through this and I'd spend a whole weekend and now I can just take my shoe box and deliver it to the professional and it's wonderful. And then we have this other line of folks who think, okay, well, I did that. Well, I still had my shoe box. I still spent the weekend, still did the same amount of work. And I came up with the exact same answer that the professional preparer came up with. I think there's a common misconception that professional tax preparers know some secret, right? Know something that is not available out there to you. And I think there's a common misconception that just because someone is a tax preparer, that means that they are a good tax preparer. So how do you think about, uh, should I hire a professional? And if I do hire a professional, well, how do I know if I'm working with someone good? What are some questions I can, are there times of the year that it might make sense for me to have the interview process that might set me up for more success than others? Yeah, we're, I mean, we're quickly coming to a close to this extended tax season because May 17th is the new filing deadline for individuals. I, I do think that this, this process should start probably right after the last, uh, we're about to make it through April, I mean, May 17th. Um, good time to probably find next year's CPA That's or right. tax preparer might be in June or July when they're not just pulling their hair out trying to get returns out the door. But here's here's the kind of the the decision matrix I would go to is if you're interviewing tax preparers is you're trying to figure out what type of tax preparer they are and what type of tax preparer you actually need because there's a lot of you guys. Uh, 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 might be self prepares and you're doing really good work. A, a lot of you financial mutants, I mean, we've had clients that we recommended go get you a, a CPA to do it. And then we find out you're still doing the taxes in the background. <laughs> you're not really saving yourself. Christy knows who, he, she, who she is. She's, you know, but it's, um, it's one of those things where if you're going to do that, I don't know if that's ideal. So ask yourself, are you really letting your hands off the reins? Right. Um, if, assuming you are, um, you then have to say, okay, do I want somebody who's just going to prepare, get me through compliance by actually getting the forms done? I know I've done all the heavy lifting. I've answered, you know, I have everything in this shoebox that I need to prepare taxes. There's no other way to save money. Then you can go to what I call just the kind of pay and go tax preparers. Mm -hmm. They're in the shopping centers. They're in all the, you know, it's, it's the, the household names of you show up, you sit there while they prepare your taxes, and then they, they, they I have visuals and, and here in my head, you know, the dot matrix printers uh -huh. running their taxes. And they're all using lasers. I, I don't think they're, they're, they're using dot matrix. They're sending you a disk. But right anyway, now, Raby's looking like, what's dot matrix They're doing your taxes mean? on the spot, billing you, filing. It's all done in one setting. Well, that's that's one type of prepare. And that's, you know, and, that, and by the way, that's not necessarily cheap. Sure. So what I'm yeah. amazed when I was doing tax preparation, everybody thought that that grocery store or that shopping center prepare was the cheapest way. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess in some ways it is, but they were, I think they were shocked to find out that a CPA sometimes might not be too much more expensive. So, so price shop this a little yep. bit, because if you want more, that's where a professional like CPA or a tax mm -hmm. preparer comes in. And here's what I think you're looking for when you have a professional tax preparer. Are they asking me questions to maximize mm -hmm. the tax, the legal tax avoidance. That's right. Because they're trying to uncover what type of planning opportunities they are from a tax per perspective, because that's what I was always trying to do. When I was preparing taxes for those 16 years, I personally was trying to pay for my fee mm -hmm. by finding you additional tax savings. And I, you know, I, the, some of the big credits that were so easy is if you had dependent care credit, you know, because nobody thinks about that. But if your both spouses are working and you got a, a, a youngster that's in daycare or yep. something, you're like, hey, how about uh, that one? You know, wh where are you at with your charitable giving? Let's make sure that, you know, we, we've documented everything mm -hmm. with that. Hey, are we doing, making sure on the front of the tax return, you know, like in a unique year like this, that you maximize mm -hmm. that? There was always ways that I was asking questions about, hey, talk to me about, um, hobbies, talk to me about side hustles. What are ways that, that, that you're using your income 
so that I could go through a questionnaire, I could go through an understanding of their financial life and help them Mm -hmm. maximize the opportunity. That might cost a little bit more, but if you can get the benefit of additional lower taxes or structuring your income in the most efficient way possible, I think it's worthwhile. I, I agree. I'm, I'm actually going to I'm going to uh, bolt on another question on this one because it ties in really well. Because this question, the, the very next question came from Hillary, and she said, "If I'm using a financial service like a Bound Wealth, right? So like financial planner, you know, investment advisory type service." Does that cover general tax advice, or would someone be wise to have a separate CPA and investment advisor service? Like, are there ways that those two can work together, or are they completely separate? Well, they can. I mean, there are firms out there that actually have tax preparation. I mean, I don't mind sharing. Carter came in here like three weeks ago to me and Bo, because he's our chief operations Mm -hmm. officer, and he's third in command here to Bound Wealth. He's like, I think we ought to start doing taxes. It's like, Carter, what are are you doing? No, no, we're not doing this. We had a big talk about it because here's why we don't do taxes. I I worked in tax preparation for a long time. Everybody can make a mistake in taxes. The tax code is so complex that everybody's going to make a mistake. And I value our relationship with our clients so much that I would hate to lose a long-term client over just a knuckleheaded decision or a knucklehead keystroke mistake mm-hmm. on a tax return. Um, so th- it's, a, it's a big concern out there. But I like the separation mm-hmm. because I always think about, you know, man, isn't it nice if you have multiple inputs into this plan? So what I like about what we do here at Abound is that we all – All of our primary advisors, because they're under our tutelage, Mm -hmm. um, they become tax experts too. I am so nerdy with taxes that everybody here kind of becomes an expert. We buy all the greatest, latest and greatest softwares to upload your tax returns into. We analyze it. We're doing the exact same mentality I had when I was preparing taxes. We're trying to find you tax deductions or mistakes to pay for our fee. I mean, we we have totally taken this to the next level. But what I love is it also allows us to collaborate with your professional tax preparer so that they can not look at us as we're an adversary. We're trying to steal the business. No, we are a person that's here to add value, to help you quarterback, to help you. Maybe there's a communication breakdown with this client, this tax client you've had for years, and they just don't understand this concept. We have a way to help build a bridge there. And I love that collaboration. I remember that the good old days, this is where I sound like an old man, back when everybody, you, CPAs were not trying to be financial planners, insurance agents weren't trying to become financial planners, right. and uh, state attorneys were not trying to become financial planners. Everybody could kind of collaborate with each other. So we could all be really good. The financial planner was the quarterback of the situation, but all the other position players were experts in what they were trying to help you with. And you guys could all collaborate and figure out how we could create the best plan possible. That's not as easy to do now that everybody thinks they're generalist. And, you know, the life insurance agents now trying to push out their mutual funds and their investment shares. And then you got the estate attorneys and the CPAs trying to get in the game. They they became more of a sales function instead of an expert. And I I like when everybody can be really good at their their position play, Mm -hmm. let the good financial planners sit on top of it and and quarterback the situation. It's a win-win for everyone involved. Love it.